Hi, Algebra 2. This is the second part of Section 8.5 Hyperbolas, and we're going to look again at this problem where we are trying to find the equation of this situation that we read about in the last section. So we've got this ship that is traveling on a hyperbolic, um, on a hyperbolic path, and it ha there are two stations that exist that are 100 nautical miles apart. The ship is traveling here. And we were recognizing that we needed A and B in order to satisfy this equation, okay? And so what we had was C, given the fact that we knew the distance from the center to one of the foci, and we need to count, uh, figure out what A and B are. So what we did is we figured out that if the ship traveled all the way down to the x-axis and we landed right here, we realized that the distance between the ships the, the distance between the stations, rather, would have to be still 100. It has to be 100 because that's what we were told. They're at negative 50 and positive 50. But yet the difference between the distances would have to still be that same 50 that we talked about before. That's how the hyperbola is generated. Now we can calculate that this, well, we did like a um, system of linear equations where we found out that the distance 2 was 75 and therefore the distance 1 is 25. And if that's the case, this location here is at 25, 0. What does that give us? Well, if that's at 25, 0, I'm going to zoom in a little bit, just a wee bit. Let's go over here. If that's 25, 0, what I have is that this distance, the center to one of the vert vertices is going to be A, and that's going to be 25. So A is 25. Yeah? Okay, cool. Now that we know that A is 25, we recognize the relationship between A, B, and C as being that of the Pythagorean theorem, A squared plus B squared equals C squared. Since A is 25, I'll put a 25 squared here, plus B squared, we'll calculate that, plus 50 squared. So 625 plus B squared plus 2,500, and we're going to get that B squared is equal to 2,500 minus 625. And sometimes I forget this because I'm all about solving. I really don't need to solve for B. The equation calls for B squared, so let's just do that. So 625 minus that, uh, let me put the 625 here so I can get my subtraction on. I've got... Um, this would be, what is this, would be a 4, this would become a 10, then a 9, and then this would become a 10. So then I have a 5, a 7, I know you didn't want to see me do this kind of subtraction this morning, but that's okay, um, 18, yeah, 1,875 is going to be my B squared term, and therefore the equation of this hyperbola will be x squared over 625, remember we need a squared, minus y squared over 1875 is equal to 1. So you knew it would happen. We have to talk about moving the hyperbola from that center origin and moving it to a variety of different centers. And things get to be a little crazy when we do that. So we'll talk about that and how to draw a, parab a hyperbola in this next section. So take a look at this chart, what we have here. Notice that we've got the HK form, just like, similar to the ellipse, right? X minus H, Y minus K. This is when we have the horizontal form of a hyperbola. And then we've got the vertical form of a hyperbola that looks like that. But of course, when we have these different forms, you know, we're talking about shifting them around so the center is no longer at the origin. And then we're going to get into these asymptotes that we didn't really get into before because we weren't drawing anything. So let's see what we got. So we're going to find the coordinates of the vertices and the foci and the equation of the asymptotes for this hyperbola right now. Now this hyperbola is still centered at the origin, so that's okay. But we're going to use this as an opportunity to practice. So you remember this is a squared and this is b squared. And you can see that because the x squared is first, we've got an orientation that's horizontal. And we need to find c squared in order to find the foci. So let's do that. a squared plus b squared equals c squared. And so that's 9 plus 4 is equal to c squared. 13 is equal to c squared. c is therefore equal to the square root of 13 which is approximately 
3.6. So we remember that A, okay, so we remember that um, A and C give me the distinct locations of the vertex and the foci um, specifically. So I'm going to start there. I'm going to find the vertices and in in that. So A is 3, so I'm going to go 3 over from the center, the center being 0, 0, because it's, there's no X minus or Y minus happening. So the, this is where my uh, vertices will end up being right here. And I'm going to just color them, I don't know, orange for the time being. So that's where my vertices are. And I know that my hyperbola is going to be doing this thing like that because it um, we're orienting in that way. All right, so the next thing is the C value to figure out where that is. So if 4 is going to be here and negative 4 is here, this 3.6 or square root of 3 will be um, a little bit beyond that. So I'm going to put it right here. And so these green dots are referring to my uh, foci or my foci or whatever. All right. So my vertices are in orange and my um, green dots refer to my um my green dots refer to my foci. Okay, thank you for being patient with me. All right, so the, now we're, we need to figure out the equation of the asymptotes. And I know you might not remember what that was, so I'll show you. In the case where we were dealing with uh, zero, zero, our, our, um, our, our hyperbola being centered at zero, zero, we had a plus or minus b over a uh, times x was the uh, equation of our asymptotes. I'm going to show you a different way, but it means exactly the same thing that we did that um, when I was growing up, so you can understand finally what this rectangular business is. So if you notice, the rectangle is literally going uh, two B values up and two A values across, centered at the center of the hyperbola. So we're going to do so we're going to do the same thing here, and let's say the B value is at two because that's what we have as B, right? B squared is that, so the B value is at two. I'm going to put a little blue dot here at 2. And so what I'm going to do is use the vertices or the A value and the B value to make a rectangle. I'm going to make this rectangle like a dotted pink rectangle. All right, so you would make this helpful rectangle and then you automatically had the equations of those two asymptotes, which would just be the diagonal of the rectangle right here. So what this gives us is kind of a guide for how our hyperbola, the, the arms of our, of, our, of our hyperbola will grow. So let me go ahead and try to get this diagonal going so it looks like it's half decent. Okay. So remember, this diagonal, these aren't really a part of the graph. It's just um, just the asymptote. So I'm going to try to dot it a little bit to make it look a little bit like it's not as prominent on our graph. OK, so now that we have that, we're now going to graph our actual hyperbola. And so the graph is still kind of an estimation. But what we're going to do, I'm going to make it orange just because that's where the vertices were. What we're going to do is we're going to use this as a guide. And it's supposed to get closer and closer as we get further and further out. And I'm going to use this as a guide. And there we go. So. We did all the things that they asked us. They asked us to find the coordinates of the vertices and the foci and the equation of the asymptotes. We kind of didn't do that. I'll do it though. Um, for the hyperbola given here, then graph, we did that. And um, let's do that final thing. Give us our asymptotes. And our asymptotes would be uh, B over AX would be the equation, uh, plus or minus that. So B is uh, 2 and A is 3. So the equation is Y is equal to plus or minus 2 over 3X. And the plus or minus gives us the positive and the negative. 
Okay, here's our last example. Feel free to talk to me and let's talk and see if we can clear up any things because this is kind of a hard section to do remotely, but that's okay. I'd love to hear from you. Graph an equation not in standard form. So we're going to find the coordinates of the vertices, the foci, the equation of the asymptotes, all of that stuff of this hyperbola. Then we're going to graph it. It's a lot to do. We've got a lot of work here, but that's okay. We've seen problems like this before. When we have problems like this, the first thing we do is kind of organize so we get all the x terms and the y terms kind of grouped together. And that's exactly what I'm doing now, just rearranging it. Then we often throw the constant term right over to the other side. And the next thing we're going to do is factor out what we can from each of the pairs of terms. So I'm going to factor out a 4 but not the x squared. We're not going to factor out the 4x because we want to kind of do a completing the square thing. This will make sense if you saw some of the other videos. So x squared minus that, and I'm going to leave a little space, and I'm going to factor out a 9 here, and I get y squared uh, plus 2y. Do you guys see how that became a plus 2y? And I'm going to leave that there, okay? And now I'm I wanted to shift everything over and I had trouble. But anyway, so now we're here. We shifted everything over to give us some space. I need to figure out what I need to add to each of these sections in order to complete the square. So I'm going to complete the square here. x squared minus 8x, half of b quantity squared would be a plus 16. And I'm going to complete the square here. Um, half of b plus, um, half of b quantity squared will be a plus one, right? So half of b quantity squared would be plus one. All right, so then I need to compensate for what I added by adding that to the other side. On this side, I added a 16, but since it's in parentheses, that's four times 16, so technically I added a 48. And on this side, I added a one, but technically, Okay, I went through this problem and that 48 caused me problems. So let me stop here, erase that stuff and point out that this is not 48. 4 times 16 isn't 48. That's 4 times 12 and it really is 64. And I can't tell you how much problems it caused me later on. So I show you the mistake to let you know I could have deleted it, but to show you the mistake to let you know that we got to be careful when doing these problems because things will turn out very ugly and it did for me. So anyway, when I add all of this stuff together, I end up with a 36 and then because negative, yeah, it's going to be a 36. And then I, when I simplify this, I end up with four times X minus four quantity squared minus nine times X. I mean, Y rather uh, plus one quantity squared. All right. You see our, our hyperbola forming. The fact that we know that our equation usually equals one or is to equal one in the form, we're going to have to make that one. So when I do that, I'm going to simplify this fraction. 4 over 36 is x minus 4 quantity squared over 9. And then 9 over 36 will end up giving me this y plus 1 quantity squared over 4. And here is whew, our hyperbola. Hard fought. Okay, let's see if we can get through this. So we're going to find the coordinates of the vertices and the foci and the equation of the asymptotes to do this whole thing. I think we can do it, let's go. So I've listed, I need to find the vertices, foci, asymptotes, and graph. I'm gonna start with the center of this hyperbola. Recognizing that my center is at four negative one, I'm gonna graph that using a purple dot right here. The next thing I need to do is calculate the vertices and I know I get that from the A value. By the way, this having an X in the front lets me know that I've got the horizontal version of my um, hyperbola and the transverse axis will be um, parallel to the x-axis, okay? So now that I have that, I'm going to use the information I have to figure out what the, fo what the uh, vertices are. A is equal to three, since A squared is nine, and it's gonna be three points to the left and three points to the right of my center. So that leaves me with the points 1, negative 1, and 7, negative 1. The next thing I need to figure out would be my foci. And I'm going to do that by using the Pythagorean theorem to figure out the C value. So after calculating the C value to be the square root of 13, I know that I'm going to add the square root of 13 to 4 from the center and subtract it to get the foci, which are located here, right here. And so I told you my method of finding the two diagonals. I'm going to make a box from the center using the vertices and the value of B. Since, since B is two units up and two units down from the center 
and A is three units out and three units to the other side from the center. This is where my value is. Watch my uh, rectangle. Here's my rectangle. Here's my diagonals and my hyperbola. And here is the equation of those asymptotes. Let's talk soon. I'll talk to you later.